Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Adam Hawkins. Each episode, I share a small batch of software engineering theory and best practices. If you enjoy this podcast, then please subscribe and share it with your friends and colleagues. The process used to write code and deploy it to production is the biggest contributor to your team's velocity. Now, you've probably been in the situation where something is seriously broken in production and need to deploy a fix right away. You may have even tried to circumvent the existing process to deploy it faster. So simply put, the faster your team can write and deploy code to production, the better. This is the principle of flow, or the first way of DevOps. The DevOps handbook provides a two-step process for achieving fast flow from development to production. Step one, use trunk-based development and continuous integration. Step two, use continuous delivery. Now you've probably heard these terms before. They're thrown around and often used incorrectly. Continuous integration is a prime example. So I'll do my best to clarify the right and proper way to achieve fast flow from development to production. The goal at the end of each development cycle is to produce production-ready builds built from master that have been verified in a production-like environment and validated with automated tests. That's continuous delivery in a nutshell. Continuous deployment takes it one step further by automatically pushing code to production. But that's a topic for another episode. For now, let's start with trunk-based development. I bet the mere mention of trunk makes some of you shudder. Some of you may even be thinking, trunk, what is this madman talking about SVN for? We use Git, so what's the point? Well, the point is to reduce your cycle time from development to production. Trunk-based development optimizes for team productivity instead of individual productivity, which is a great way to achieve that goal. Trunk-based development boils down to keeping branches small and maintaining an incremental straight line of development. Branches should be merged to trunk or master at the end of each day. They must also be covered by automated tests so it's clear which commits are broken. This is the origin of continuous integration, and believe me, there are a lot of quote, continuous things in DevOps. This practice ensures commits are smaller, thus easier to write, test, deploy to production, hence improving your times from development to production. I can hear some of you saying, Adam, wait, what are you talking about? Why does this make any sense? What am I supposed to do with my feature branches? And what about those epic branches that are open for weeks? Well, my answer to that question lies in a perspective shift regarding what individual roles are and what a team values. But I want to put these questions in another way. Ask yourself this question. Would you rather work in your topic branch for as long as possible, or would you rather get your code out the door and into production? I choose production, and I think you should too. But I don't want to get too far into the weeds on this area because it's somewhat controversial, so check the show notes for more links and discussion on this topic. For now, let's move forward to continuous delivery. The idea behind continuous delivery is to connect commits from trunk or master to an automated deployment pipeline that verifies builds are fit for production. Naturally, this requires varying levels of tests and automation. Now, don't get lost in the statements from the blogosphere that you need Docker or microservices and all that stuff to achieve these goals. These proclamations miss the point that technical practices like infrastructure as code and automated testing are more important than specific technologies. Let me repeat that. Practices are more important than specific technologies. So there's no prescriptive solution, but I'll provide you an outline. Step one, deploy code to a staging environment. Step two, run a test against staging. Step three, deploy code to production, ideally using something like a blue-green strategy or a canary. Step four, run smoke tests against production. Step five, is it all good? Well, great, you're done. If not, then roll back. Then expand out to more pre-production environments as necessary. You may have a dedicated performance test environment or a manual QA environment or you know whatever floats your boat, really. Honestly, it doesn't matter how many environments you have as long as the promotion and verification is automated as much as possible. However, your number of environments will grow over time as your deployment pipeline becomes more rigorous. All right, that's enough for this batch. The principle of flow covers reducing cycle times from development to production. Trunk-based development backed by continuous integration and continuous delivery is the best way to achieve that. The book Accelerate provides two metrics to measure flow lead time, and deployment frequency. Lead time is how long it takes to go from commit to production. Deployment frequency is simply how often deploys happen. Accelerate also breaks down these metrics into tiers. Top tier lead times are under an hour. 
This means a developer can start working on and deliver completed code to production in under an hour. Mid-tier lead times range between one week and a month. So, where does your team stack up? Anyway, that's a wrap on this episode. Head over to the podcast website smallbatches.dev for a transcript, show notes, and links to my review and further analysis on both the DevOps Handbook and Accelerate. Until the next one, good luck out there and happy shipping. Want to learn more about DevOps but don't have time for books? Then sign up for my free email course at freedevopscourse.com. The course details the three ways in depth, along with continuous delivery, trunk based development, and much more over the course of nine days. Sign up now at freedevopscourse.com.